In this video, I am going from Mysuru to Bengaluru in the Vande Bharat Express. and welcome to Sugar Spice Nice. My name is Shweta and as you can figure I am at a railway station. I am at Mysuru station and I am actually heading to Bengaluru in my first ever Vande Bharat Express ride. This is the train and I need to head to my compartment to board. So come on, let's go. This is actually the starting station for the train and it came here around 12, 10, 12, 15 and after that they've been cleaning the train. Now it's 12.45. My train departs at 1.05 but we can enter inside and get our seats and stuff. The minute you come inside, you come through an automatic door which opens and shuts on its own. This is what the seat looks like. There is ample space for luggage for every seat. One excellent feature of the seat is that there is a bottle holder down here and there are charging points down here. And here is the snack table. Thankfully, there are two holders, one for water and one for any beverage and this is long enough to have an entire meal. And you can also turn it to just hold something small. The seat ahead also has a little bit of a pocket to keep something. And of course, this reclines. And here we have a headrest cushion which can be adjusted based on your height. Here we have a hook to be able to hang something and this is the footrest. So this actually even opens up like this and I was actually wondering how does this go back up but you just have to press this lever and that's it. So I remember this from the Vista Dome and I was so fascinated with it. The seat actually turns. This is not so much for the view but just for the overall experience. And it comes back very easily like this like this. Now that I've shown you everything to do with the seat and stuff, I'll also show you the essentials. So this is like the washroom and there's an Indian style and a Western style. The washrooms do look pretty spacious. I guess it's time for the train to depart and we're off. This train actually goes all the way till Chennai and I think the total time that it takes to reach Chennai from Mysuru is 6 or 7 hours but I am actually just going to be stopping at Bengaluru and that journey is a little bit lesser than 2 hours. The class that I'm in is executive class. You can check the other available seats and all in the IRCTC website and I'm going to leave details of my train fare and stuff on the screen and in the description box below so do check that. So we just got soup, a packet soup, an actual glass tableware. what the meal looks like. We have steamed rice. Actually, it's not just steamed rice, it's jeera rice. Then we have dal. Then we have a paneer dish. My friend here is eating the non-veg meal. So you can see what the non-veg meal looks like. And basically, this dish is replaced with paneer. Here we have sweet dish, gulab jamun. And here we have one dry sabzi, aloo sabzi. This is parathas. I'm going to be trying the paratha with the sabzi. Not bad. Paneer is decent. The paratha though is very very thick. It's not just potato. There's a potato, peas, carrots, yeah, a little bit of tomato as well and French beans. Mm. This is really good. Let's have some dal and rice. Dal and rice is good. In this we have curd and we have some pickle as well. Honestly, the paneer gravy was okay, but the pieces were extremely chewy. Parathas you really need to do something about because uh, they are really thick and kind of like not properly done, not properly cooked from inside. But dal and rice, I did enjoy. Now time for gulab jamun. Nice. It's got a little something inside. Mm. Guess what? We also got some ice cream. This is butterscotch ice cream from Have More. Even the earlier soup that came was Noor and this is Have More. So I like that they've incorporated a lot of uh, brands. There's one thing that keeps happening is that the tray table is kind of a slope so it keeps sliding away. I think they should really do something about this because this is a mishap waiting to happen. train ride has been really really good. I'll tell you the reasons why I really enjoyed it. One, the greenery that you see while going from Mysore to Bangalore. So many palm trees, a little bit of hills, 
and it's just really really relaxing secondly what i enjoyed is ease of traveling from mysore to bangalore otherwise i would have had to consider road which would have taken me at least 4 to 5 hours or i would have had to consider a flight which would have been a little bit more expensive but this ended up being like less than half the price of a flight ticket for two very very comfortable this is considered to be a semi high speed or a semi fast train the max speed to which it can go to is 160 or 180 kilometers per hour but because this route is new i think they aren't running at full speed capacity it's a little bit lesser probably 100 kilometers per hour or so even so being able to reach bangalore from mysore in less than 2 hours is uh, wow i think overall my experience in the vande bharat express has been really good i definitely want to take more rides to more destinations so let me know if you guys would like to see that i think it's a very very proud and prestigious moment for us indians to be able to have this kind of a service the moment that i've been waiting for to show you legendary bangalore food i cannot start the food part of this video by any other place other than brahmins for me it remains one of my most favorite places in bangalore and the idli and the chutney here is just mind blowing this is a plate of idli vada and the first i thought they gave it separate but they gave it together and that's the idli and that's the vada and the vada is looking so crispy let's just go in for the first bite of the idli chutney mm Oh good god. I think you can see like my face just lit up. This chutney is tasty beyond imagination. It's got a fair bit of chili inside and I feel like they've even blended up the curry leaves. Was the flavor so prominent and the idlis are soft. I'm going to be trying a bite of the medu vada. Oh, look at that. Looks like spongy soft goodness. I'm not crazy about medu vada but this stuff is good. I have come here before and I've shared a Bangalore video with you before as well. But this stuff never gets old. Okay, now it's time for Kesari Bath and Khara Bath. Kesari Bath is uh, Rava Shira. So this is the sweet Rava, and this is the Upma. This has a few vegetables. I can see tomato. I can see grated carrot, chilies. Oh my God! I think if there's one place in Bangalore now that you can come, only that one place. Let that be Brahmins. It's so nicely done. such a generous amount of oil and ghee ensuring that the rava doesn't feel dry at all I'm going to be taking a bite of the kesari bath so it's also got pineapple bits so this is pineapple shira and these are pieces of cashew many places they just call it pineapple shira but there's no pineapple flavor but here you do and the ghee oh my god the kesari bath and khara bath each cost 30 rupees the idli single piece cost 18 rupees and the medu vada cost 30 rupees finally finishing with some filter coffee now the filter coffee here is a real deal i mean you can just get the aroma of it the minute you enter and it cost 20 rupees per glass on that smaller glass it's a full one ah oh, this is good strong filter coffee location details of all the places that i'm visiting including this one are going to be in the description box below The next place that I'm taking you to is Vidyarthi Bhavan. Now this place has innumerable reviews on Google. One thing that you have to get used to to all of these legendary places is the waiting. But here their waiting system is pretty cool. You can actually call up on the number on the screen before coming to reserve your spot or else you can take a token from here. Very well managed waiting system. I think a lot of restaurants in Mumbai need to take cues from this. And inside is a very humble, a very old style eating setup. One thing that is famous over here is uh, masala dosa. Not just the masala dosa but also the way they bring it to your table. That is also what is famous. Even the texture of the masala dosa is very very different here. It is slightly spongy and normally you don't expect a spongy dosa to be crunchy, right? But this one is also crunchy and it's also a little bit on the red side. I don't know whether it's red rice stews or what, but it's really flavorful. And so is the masala inside. Very simple, not too much going on, not overly flavored, just about right. Even the chutney is okay, but I think for me the chutney at Brahmins is way better. Another thing that I tried over here is rava vada. This is literally rava with a bit of spicing. It's got just a little bit of spices inside, and the beauty of rava when you fry it is the texture. It is just mind blowing. My bill for both of these is hundred and three rupees. In this place, most likely you will be sharing a table with somebody else if you're one or two or three people. It's actually very very common in a lot of restaurants in Bangalore. 
Next is a place called Truffles and this is a place which has been around since probably early 2000 and is extremely famous with like the younger crowd but I know a lot of uh, my friends recommend this place to me especially for their burgers. I think I saw a burger on everybody's table. So obviously I had to order one. So this is one of the OG ones, the veggie burger. For the price, the size is exceptional. This burger cost me 155 rupees. Patty is also pretty nice and chunky. It's filled with veggies, not just potato, but it's got tons of French beans, carrots, uh, probably a little bit of peas, I'm not sure. And it's also got a lot of flavor. Like it didn't feel bland or it didn't feel like the mayo was overpowering the taste of the patty. I think that crunchiness and that flavor from veggies really, really came through. They also give a bit of chips on the side and honestly, I would have preferred fries. They also have a ton of dessert options, but I decided to move to another place for dessert just so that I can try more and share more with you guys. While heading to another place for dessert, we came across so many different restaurants and cafes. Just this whole area, Lavelle Road, is super super lit and super buzzing. And so many different eating outlets and options here. There's one that I saw called Airlines Hotel and this is another place that I really want to visit. I just hope I can come here. But for now, we are heading to Glen's Bakehouse. See, this place looks gorgeous. It is one of the most cutest, coziest cafes that I've seen. There is a lot of food here, pizzas, sandwiches and stuff as well. The one thing that really caught my attention here is their dessert spread. I mean, I'm not going to say much. I'm just going to show you guys how gorgeous and how yummy everything looks. They have good options of vegetarian and non-vegetarian things in their patisserie section. And puffs, croissants, all of that is there. But some of these cakes just look gorgeous. There is a rainbow pastry, which is just so stunning to look at. Then there are donuts, glazed donuts. The red velvet is something that I've seen and heard about a lot. Like different forms of it, like in the form of pastry, slices, and even cupcakes. They have other flavors also in this. This one with a lemon icing, and then there's this one with a chocolate and vanilla icing. Yeah, I don't think I'm sharing this. This is tiny, it's like the perfect size for one. I don't know whether he's warmed it or they are like slightly warm inside, at least this one was. I think these have egg, they're not eggless. And these are two options and uh, I'm going to offer these to you guys. Each of those little cakes cost 20, 22 rupees. I think for the price point, these are exceptional. The red velvet, I did try a little bit and the frosting is amazing. It's actual cream cheese, not like the whipped cream that you see everywhere. I'm starting the day today by visiting a super duper legendary place. This is called CTR Central Tiffin Rooms and it's been around since 1952. I read it on their board there. It's a Sunday morning, 10 a.m. You have to see the people waiting in a queue. But the good thing is that the queue is like really orderly and really disciplined. Finally, after about 15 to 20 minutes of waiting, I got my table. And here also there are sharing tables. The one thing that's most popular here is Bene Dosa. Bene means butter and this is essentially a butter masala dosa. The minute you try and break one bite of it, your whole hand is going to be filled with butter. But I have to say this is crispy goodness. When you see it, after seeing the thickness of the dosa, after seeing how spongy it is, you don't expect it to be that crisp, but this is just mind-blowingly crisp. I cannot fathom how exactly does it get so crispy after being so thick. And the masala, good, not too overpowering flavor. Like, you know, it lets you enjoy the crispiness of the dosa. I didn't like the white coconut chutney that came with it that much, as much as I enjoyed this green one. This green one has a little bit of garlic and a lot of coriander and stuff. And it's just super duper tasty. I really wanted to try the goli bhaji here because uh, this is one of the best places in Bangalore to enjoy goli bhaji. But it wasn't there on the menu in the morning. It's there in the evening after four. But I did try the rava idli. By the looks of it, it almost looks like an upma. But it's a giant idli, very very heavy actually. And it's got a little bit of tempering inside, a few chilies. If it's a sambar or a sabzi or a dal or what is it, it feels like a mix of everything. It's got a hint of like sour sambar flavor. It's got a lot of veggies. But this is what made the rava idli like really really good. Finally ended this meal with filter coffee but of course I feel like I preferred the filter coffee at Brahmins but overall I would definitely recommend this place for their bene masala dosa. My total bill here was 240 rupees for everything that I ate. I ate two bene masala dosas, one rava idli and two filter coffees.
The next place that we are at is so beautiful, so calm and so peaceful. I'm at Kabin Park or Cubon Park. Let me know how you pronounce it in the comments below. I just came here to take a break from eating in the city and enjoy some greenery and fresh air. And the weather is also really nice. In spite of it being sunny, feeling like nice and cool. Lots of areas where you can sit and chill. The garden also has a dedicated spot for walking, running, jogging and there are also people doing skating. There's no entry ticket or anything in this park. For proper timings, do check their Google location. So the next place that we're at is called Airlines Hotel. I have no idea why they call it Airlines Hotel but if you do, then let me know in the comments below. This is a place which is open air. There are just so many really, really old uh, trees, especially banyan trees around. And they are just so tall, so huge and they look at least like 100 years old. I think this place definitely has a vibe. So a lot of tables are ordering the paper dosa. I think paper masala but uh, we've had masala dosa like just a few hours back. So we just ordered a sada paper dosa. One thing which I forgot to tell you is that when you come here, the water that's served is warm jeera water which is like so good. Just what we need after a whole day of binging. One of the few places where they actually give sambar as well with dosa. I've turned it around and you can see the amount of oil to make this crisp. And this is like really, really crunchy. I haven't had a dosa this thin in Bangalore, at least on this trip. Good sambar. I have to fold it to make it fit in one plate. It's like my hands are bathed in oil or butter. I really like the sambar here. It has its slight Swedish aftertaste, which I love. The kind of sambar that we are used to having in Mumbai. Let's try the chutney as well. I think it's got a little bit of mint inside. But I think I'm going to be enjoying this dosa with the sambar. This is one thing that I've been waiting to have on this trip. This and goli bhaji. At least ek to ho gaya. So this is Mangalore buns and uh, this is something that I tried for the first time in Udupi. And after that I've been like a fan. This is almost like fried bread and it's a little bit on the sweeter side. It's in with a tiny bit of jeera and they serve it with uh, sambar and chutney. But honestly with that sweet aftertaste, I don't think I need that sambar and chutney with it. The cost of the Mangalore buns and the paper dosa is rupees 230. They also have a car service, so there's like a dedicated parking area and you can sit and enjoy your food in the car. Or you can sit here and enjoy the food in the greenery. And another thing that I saw on a lot of tables that people are bringing their pets, especially doggies, and enjoying their meals here. So this place is also pet friendly. As much as I love the filter coffee here in Bengaluru, I think my inner voice is just calling out for chai and it's been a long time since I've had like the regular adrak wali or masala chai. I found this place called Ramji Chai Wale and I literally walked here from the airline hotel. The chai that I ordered is ginger tea and I instructed them to make it with like more ginger, less milk and more tea leaves and they did such a good job at it. The chai was everything that my heart wanted at that time. The cost of the chai that I had was 40 rupees per glass. So if you are also looking for good chai in Bengaluru, then Ramji Chai Wale should be on your list. The next place that we are at is Lal Bagh Botanical Garden. Today actually there is a, an entry ticket to get here, 75 rupees, because there's some flower show happening until the Republic Day. So while entering, I saw a big mountain kind of thing where everybody was climbing up and there seemed to be a temple at the top of it. Next place that I visited inside is the Bonsai Park. And then there was this tree with such giant roots. Now this is the part of the flower show for which we paid that entry ticket. And inside it was just too crowded. So I didn't go all the way in, but I did see a few of the flower arrangements. In this section, one can also buy things like plants, saplings, seeds, and other things related to horticulture as well. Now this area is the cactus garden. The garden itself is shut. There's the different varieties of cactus that you'll be able to see here. Then we came to this part where we saw so many sunflowers and I feel like this was my moment of the day being so close to so many sunflowers. This part is the lotus pond and here is the lake. Very serene, very pretty. In the lake you can probably see a few ducks. This here is the rose garden. Again, can't go inside all the way but you can see the different colours of roses. Now this is a part which almost feels like Chopati to me. Of course there's no seaside but still kind of stalls that are lined up one after another. There's bhel puri, there's different cut fruits, there's corn. And right here ahead is the floral clock tower. People who stay in Bangalore could definitely come here for a walk and stuff. But even tourists can visit here to feel that sense of peace.
The next place that we are going to is MTR Marvelly Tiffin Rooms. Now this is a place that I visited in Bengaluru, in Udupi, and I've usually tried their thalis, but this time I wanted to try something else. So I came here in the evening, and the thing that is synonymous with MTR is waiting. Just like so many other legend Bangalore places, it was still lesser than what I waited for a thali. I think my max wait time here has been slightly over an hour. I think it was about 20 minutes to 30 minutes. Here also the concept of sharing tables exists. So right now they only had rava idli, dosa, shira. I ordered two things which uh, I was really keen to try here. One was the rava idli and the other was damrut halwa. Damrut is ash gold and it is a speciality here in Karnataka. The rava idli here is very different from the rava idli I ate in the morning. And it's a little bit lighter, a little bit more fluffier. The tempering also I feel like is a bit more stronger. There's of course the usual mustard and stuff. But there's also quite a few bits of cashew which has been very nicely fried. And this and the green chutney is a very very good combination. Their chutney I absolutely love. Filled with probably a little bit of ginger, a lot of mint, a lot of coriander and chilies as well. It was on the spicier side but very tasty. Now coming to the Damrut Halwa. You get like this small portion and I personally would have been able to have three or more of this. This is so good, so tasty. Inside it there are cashews and you can feel it's been made in ghee like one of the best halwas I've ever had. I think I like this one a little bit more than Kesari Bath also. Finally ended it with filter coffee here. Filter coffee comes in these cups and not in the usual steel glass and this is quite a big portion of filter coffee. It's also probably slightly more expensive than the other places but this is good filter coffee. Strong enough, you can add sugar as per your taste. Feels amazing after a meal here. My total for two filter coffees, one Damrut Halwa and one Rava Idli here is rupees 238. You cannot miss MTR. You'll find it in many places apart from Bengaluru as well. So definitely keep your eyes open for MTR whenever you're traveling down south. Any of these legendary places has been without any crowd. I think I've said that at most places, but the crowd at Rameshwaram is next level. I think I waited in queue for at least 20-25 minutes and mind you, there's no place to sit. You just have to order, pick up your meal and stand outside and eat. And I actually came to this place because it was recommended to me by a subscriber who I met at Glenn's Bakehouse, so thank you so much for that. The one thing that I saw I, almost everybody ordering from here is ghee podi idli or podi dosa and uh, I decided to have the podi idli. Now you have to see how amazing it looks. So there is ghee of course and podi on top of like a big thatte type of idli. And then there are chutneys. There's a coconut chutney and I think that's a tomato chutney. I have a feeling this is going to be super fiery. When I just got this plate, the only thing that I could smell was ghee. Oh good god, I don't think I've had anything like this before. The idli is super super soft. I can't even tell you how much ghee there is on top of it. The podi is too good, not overly spicy. I just had it with a coconut chutney and the flavor of the chutney is so on point. Trying a bite with the tomato chutney. As you can see my bites have gotten smaller and smaller because every bite is so heavy. Mmm. Tomato chutney is nice, but I think I like the plain coconut chutney better. The cost of one ghee podi idli is 80 rupees. It's my last morning in Bangalore and if there's one place that I really wanted to repeat, it is Brahmins. Actually, I also wanted to repeat Rameshwaram. I wanted to repeat MTR for the Damrut Halwa. I wanted to repeat Vidyarthi Bhavan for the dosa. CTR as well for the dosa. If it was for me, I would spend another day just repeating all of these. But I could come to Brahmins more easily, so I'm here and I'm having the idli, of course, the kesari bath and the khara bath. I also realized that the khara bath here has little bits of onion and uh, you can't feel that much onion kind of flavor, but they just add like the right kind of zing. I'm going to leave locations of all the places that I visited in the description box below, so do check them out. I stayed here in the Langford Keys by TGI Hotel and my experience was kind of okay. The hotel is okay, it's clean and stuff, but service is a massive issue um, so that's one department where I feel like it lacks but if you're looking for something on a budget then it might be a good option it's centrally located I'm gonna leave a link to that as well in the description box so that is really it from me in this video I hope you guys enjoyed my trip as much as I did don't forget to share this video with all of your friends and family who are crazy about food in Bengaluru subscribe to my channel for more and I'll see you in my next video from probably another destination bye